Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the weekly uh, derivative trading tutorial, which is number seven. And uh, uh, lots of interesting things to share with you tonight, and uh, plenty of things to tell you. So I always enjoy these sessions. I like the topic very much. I, you know, I'm, I'm very fond of it. And uh, so let's get, let's get started. Okay. Um, so today is uh, February the 3rd. And I'm going to tell you a bit about, uh, <clears throat> well, this I meant to tell you last week. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Hold on a second. Uh, that's better. Okay, now you can see. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about the averaging delta thing that we have been discussing uh, throughout this term, starting from a very simple concept, even just like geometry. Um, but there is actually a theoretical foundation to it. Um, I want to tell you a bit about forward rates as in forward interest rates uh, versus forward option volatility. And if you can understand the parallels, I think you're going to find what Govert was saying last night uh, a lot easier to understand. Okay, but Some of you asked me actually to, to explain that to you, so I will do that. Um, I want to go through some practice questions. Uh, we, we're going to go into the second set, okay? Um, and I'll answer any other questions you may have. Now, so first of all, uh, what is going on? Uh, what is new this week? Well, first of all, last week's tutorial. Uh, you can now watch that on YouTube if you want to. Uh, this one also, the slides for this uh, are available on Blackboard even now, okay? Uh, although they may change a little bit later on. Um, it's also being captured, as you can see. Um, and I will produce this and then put it on online as soon as I can, possibly tomorrow, okay? Uh, now, question set one, uh, I have put that on Blackboard. So sorry if there's a little bit of delay. There are three versions. There is a clean version. There is a version with all my notes on it. And there is a version with just the answers. Okay. So no notes. So I don't, you, you look at the one you want to. Okay. If you want to go over the exercise again with, with nothing interrupting you, then use the clean version. If you want to read my notes, you can do that. If you want to find the answer, you can go to the one with the answers, okay? Uh, now, I'll give you an incentive to participate. So for set one, actually, I haven't answered question 16 yet, okay? Um, and um, so, or I haven't gone through question 16, I should say. And set two, uh, we try and go through that today, and I hope we can at least go through questions from one to seven. I'm going to leave out eight and nine. Now, next week, if you can answer them correctly, you probably can, or someone has told you the answer, but, you know, if you can explain your answer to me for those three questions, I promise I'll give you some P points. Okay. P stands for participation. So it really will get you some points for your overall results. Okay. Uh, from one point to three points. It just depends how you explain it. Okay, so these three questions I would like you to have a look at between now and next week. Uh, set two also is online. I think it is, uh, so we can check. Uh, now, these exercises are actually very useful for you 
to get practice. Uh, they are the best way for you to learn. And, you know, while we are going through them, uh, it, is, it is the best way also for me to share with you, you know, my additional comments. Um, I'll just check that I, I think it is there. Um, under reference material. So, I, yeah, so um, uh, the answers, I will give it to you next week for, for set one. But if you look at the, the, the annotated version, I have basically circled all the answers anyway, okay? But I'll give you the, the, the answer set because this contains the answer to question 16 for set one. Okay. So set two also is there, so feel free to have a look. Um, today, I hope to at least get through seven questions. Uh, the other thing is that assignment two, now it is on Blackboard, so I posted it up there. Um, you can have a look. Um, I, so for today, for this week, I'll just let you digest and think about that a little bit. Uh, the due date for assignment two is actually March the 2nd. That is the day when you actually take the final. It's a Friday, okay? Now, I don't want, I don't think you want to take your final in the evening and then go home and finish your assignment. I don't think so, okay? So try to get it done beforehand, but everything has to end on that Friday. Um, so the usual practice not every time, but usual practice is when the final is done, then everything is done, okay? Um, but you have, you, you, you basically have one month. Um, so I let you think about that a little bit, and then um, uh, we might discuss it later on and if you have any questions, okay? Um, oh, yes. Um, now the next lecture, will be next Friday, um, but the next tutorial, okay, is not next Saturday evening. I, I'm sorry about that. I have a, I have a wedding I need to go to, if you must know. Um, I can't change the date. If it was my own wedding, I'll try, okay, but uh, it's somebody else's wedding, so I can't say, excuse me, can you change your date? I got a tutorial, I, I need to run. Um, so, please forgive me, okay? Uh, Sunday morning, uh, meet you here. And in fact, if you want to come earlier, if we, if we start at 8.30, I, I can even spend, I'm happy to spend two hours with you, um, which will be helpful. Let, let, let's see how we go. Uh, I will let you know the venue later on, okay? But Sunday is never a, it's never a problem to find a place, uh, as you know. Um, so don't come here next Saturday night. Uh -huh. Oh, really? You um... Right, so this is the timetable. So next week uh, will be on Sunday. And um, so all the YouTubes are available, including the one from last week. As you can see, there's a, there's a web link next to it, okay? So I will just keep adding to it. Um, so YouTube, you know about that. Okay, so let's... Um, Okay, how are we going to do this? Um, maybe we do this, we do this, because some of you are asking me to, to explain to you uh, the, the idea of forward volatility, okay? Um, now, this actually came from the lecture last night, if you remember when uh was it lecture six i think or lecture seven 
was six. Um, um, here, okay, so around around this area. So the idea the idea is as follows. Uh, you have, sorry, this has got nothing to do with derivative trading. Um, uh, okay, so now this is what's what's happening. So you have two options. So let's say this is time, and there is a longer there's a longer option. Let's say sixty days. There's a shorter one, which is thirty days. And although Black Shoals tells you that you know volatility for the same underlying should be constant uh, over time, we know that's not true. It's not even constant at different strikes, and it's not constant uh, for different. So you have a you have a sixty day option, and the vol is quoted at, let's say, twenty eight percent per annum. And you have a thirty day option, when it's actually quoted somewhat higher. So the one month is quoted at a higher volatility than the two month now first of all first thing okay the second thing is you know that uh, within the first month on a particular day there will be an earnings announcement from this company and that is the only thing which is unusual for this 60 day period, okay? Otherwise, every other day, you'd consider that as just a normal day, okay? Now, the, you know how in, in interest rates, in interest rates, okay? There is this idea called forward rate, which I'm sure you guys are, are familiar with. So forward rate is this, okay? So you, if you know a, a six month interest rate, then if you know a three-month interest rate, then you know the three-month rate in three months' time. This is called a forward rate, okay? If you call that X, and this is, this is Y, then the reason you can find out what X is, is that X is Z, is just a product of X and Y in, in a sense, okay? So X is kind of like the break even. You guys are okay with that, right? Yeah? Now, the idea that Govard was talking about last night um, kind of takes this one step further. And I'll, I'll explain to you what, he, what I mean by one step further, okay? So step number one is Okay, so you, you can now work out that if indeed the 30 day was at 32, huh? notice it is higher, and then the 60 day, zero to 60 day, is at 28. Now it's not drawn to scale, it's a bit exaggerated, okay? Uh, so 0 to 30 day vol is 32, 0 to 60 day vol is 28, then you can probably figure out that uh, the, I'm going to redraw that. If I ask you what is the vol 30 days, the 30 day vol from 30 day onwards, okay, uh, first of all, even without doing any calculation, do you think it will be here? 
or do you think it'll be here? I'm asking you for the break even. So if one period is 32, and so if x was 32, in other words, and z was 28, do you think y is likely to be here or here? You don't need any math for that, it's just intuition. Less than 28. Who said that? See you. Why, why, why do you say that? Very good. Very good. Although it's average, not, not the normal sort of kindergarten average, is a geometric, or well, it's not even geometric, okay? But, but you are right. Uh, if 60 day is the average between 32 and something else, that something else has to be below, okay? So it should write. Please do a scan on this, yeah. Uh, uh, everyone, is, everyone else is okay with that? Okay, now, so that is the, that is the so-called forward vol, okay? But it doesn't stop there, okay? Um, so Govern actually takes this idea one step beyond, oh, I know the forward vol, I'm so clever. No, that, there's more to it than that. Uh, so let's say your 60-day vol was 28. So now you can calculate your, your 30 to 60 day. And let's say it is 24. It won't be, by the way. Okay? But I'm just making these numbers really simple. Uh, I have a, an Excel example which will demonstrate precisely how you work these things out. And I, I will share that with you later on. Okay? But it is not 24. Okay? But just pret pretend it is. Uh, for simplicity. So now, now we take it one step further. And the idea is, well, from 30 to 60 days, when there are no earnings announcement, so the market is basically thinking that on a normal sort of uneventful day, the wall should be 24, but during the first period, it is 32. That must be because the market is pricing in a 24 vol for every day, except that day when there is a, an earnings announcement. Are you with me? Yeah. So the market is pricing in some potential movement for that day. Now the question is, how much? And again, you actually can work it out if you assume that the, so now what you do is, uh, well now you, you go to stage two and stage two is, all right, well, I know the 30 day is 32 and I know the 29 day is 24. So that one extra day must be somewhere really sky high up there somewhere. Okay. So it could be like 55 or maybe 80. Okay. 80. Let's, let's say 80. Uh, I will, I will um, tell you why I, I picked 80 in, in a moment. So let's say you worked out the, the break even. Now, the way you can do this, and you can work out this one day, so this is 30 day, this is 29 day, and I know I, I've drawn that one day at the end, and here that one day is somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter, okay? it's not the sequencing. It's the geometric average. Where, where you put it doesn't, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, now, let's say you work it out and it turns out to be something like 80. Now, 80 is an annual sigma. 
is annualized. Okay, so that means the daily would be what? Thank you. Five percent. Now, you know why I picked eighty? Because the first time I saw Govard did this, uh, it so happened that um, I looked at Google, Google options, options on Google, and as luck would have it, uh, I found an option on Google where it was only a one-day option. Um, and on and on that day, uh, they had a, they had there was an earnings announcement actually planned for the company. So I looked at the vol, and you know what the vol was eighty. Okay? So it meant that the market was expecting there's going to be a five percent price swing either way. And amazingly, at the end of that day. The price change really was five percent. All right, so so sometimes markets do get it right, uh, especially the option market. Okay, now if all of the things I said to you just now, if, if they don't hit you right away, so there are two things you can do. So one, you can go home and um, I thought I wasn't recording it. You can go home and uh, and watch the video if you want to, uh, and then there is a spreadsheet here, which I will upload. Um, now this one was the last time when I was explaining to you that the the link between the gamma uh, between the theta. The trading theta, not not the uh, not the daily, not the calendar theta. The trading theta and the expected gamma revenue. If in doubt, this was also on on, on video okay? early. Uh, I think two two sessions ago. But this one, this one explains exactly what I have said to you just now, and the two steps that you need to follow. Uh, now this one does a precise calculation. Um, so if the 30-day vol was 32% and the 60-day was 28, the 30-day vol in 30-day will be around 24, but it's actually 23.32. If you're wondering how, did, how, how do you figure that out, Please just go through this spreadsheet, okay? I don't want to waste any everyone's time. Uh, if you go through this, you should be able to, to figure it out. That's step one. So this works out that the forward vol is 23.32. It's just saying this is 23.32. All right. And then this one here is 23.32 and then from there you do step number two step number two is as i said you take the forward rate idea one step beyond uh, and so if 30 day was 32 volt and 29 days was 23.3 it's just rounding Okay, it's 23.32. Then you can work out what is the vol for that one day, which translates to 122%. Um, and then what you can do, and then what you can do is, well, you say you ask yourself, you say you ask yourself, okay, this is what the market thinks will happen to this stock on earnings day. So 122% per annum is equal to, what's that? No, more than that. 
七四十二。Yeah, I got the seven right. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, now so this means the market is pricing in a seven point six percent daily movement on the day when the earnings will be announced. So you ask yourself, is that too much, or is that too little? If you think it's too much, then maybe you can try and sell this uh, on that one day, and then you hedge it, and then you 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 can you can um, you can do a scalp. Okay. Um, is everyone okay with that? One more thing to point out to you. Um, you see here the volatility is 122%. Um, occasionally this is an interview question, although it probably will not be asked of a, of a junior person. Uh, and it wouldn't be asked of a very senior trader either. Okay? Um, the question would be, since it is not possible to lose more than 100% of your money, do you think there's uh, an arbitrage in there? You know what I mean? Now, now, what is volatility? Volatility is nothing more than is the probability distribution of what is what is your one what is the one sigma sixty six percent plus one sigma minus what is this what is this value here? Okay. So you know from your investment and portfolio analysis. Uh, so if your if your one sigma was more than a hundred percent, that means what, what was it again? Uh, one hundred and twenty-two. Okay. So there's a there's a one sigma chance that you can make or lose one hundred and twenty-two percent. But then you 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 said, well, hold on a second. I can't lose. I can't lose more than 100% of my investment unless I leverage. And here you're not, you're not leveraging. Okay? We're not talking about leverage. Is there, is there an arbitrage? You understand my question? First of all, you, you, you understand what, what sigma is, right? Or, or the volatility value. If, if, your, if your vol was 16, what the hell does that mean? And when you, 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 know, you, need to, you need to understand the fundamentals. When you put, call up our old friend, all of these things are observable except for your volatility. And that is, a, that is an input that you have to put, okay, there is a market price, there is, okay. Uh, what is that? We keep saying, you know, volatility, volatility. What, what, what are you putting in there? What you are putting in there is the market estimation of what is the likely uh, distribution of returns for this stock or this currency or this bond or commodity or whatever. And that volatility corresponds to the, the one sigma. Okay? So in other words, it's trying to, assuming asset returns are normally distributed, which we know they're not. Okay? It's basically the market trying to come up with what is the bell shape what is the what is the one sigma value? That's the volatility. Okay, so that's the first question. Actually, that can be an interview question. That that will be a that will be an easy one. What is your understanding of option volatility? What 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 are you putting in there? Okay, and I have to answer that. Is everyone okay with that? Now that that's oh someone is shaking his head. Go ahead. Is not okay. Huh? Hmm? Why is it bigger than 100%? 
Well, I'm, that's what I'm asking you. Who wants to, who wants to attempt to answer? Very good. Did you hear that? That's what I call a creative thinker. Um, because it is actually a magnified daily return. Okay. Now, if you if your time frame was one year, then I agree. In a one year time frame, you cannot have you cannot lose more than 100%, okay? Now for one day, you take yesterday. Yesterday, how much did the US market actually fall, the stock market? In one day, 2%, okay? Now, if you just simply multiply 2% by the number of, and we're not talking like option and, and square roots and all that, but just multiply that by 250 because there are 250 trading days, okay? Then your annualized loss yesterday for the stock market was 500%, wasn't it? Now you can't lose 500% in a year unless you are leveraged. We're not talking leverage, we're just talking normal. You can't lose 500%, but you can lose 2% a day, okay? So when things are annualized, you should give yourself another two points, please. Yeah. Uh, when things are annualized, uh, then you gotta be careful whether you are magnifying, you know, a, a shorter term return, uh, or whether you really are, whether you really have an arbitrage in there. Okay, that's just a side comment to make you think. Okay, um, now so I would advise you to just to go go home and play around with this. Okay, I'm going to shut that down, and um, I think I already loaded the spreadsheet. But let me. I haven't. <clears throat> uh, I'll do that later. Now, what I would like to do now, so uh, is to is to grab some questions, and um, I'm gonna this is set number two, okay, which is already. Uh, which is already on Blackboard. Now, it looks like this. So, what time is it now? 10 past seven. Um, what we can do is we can selectively do some of these with uh, you reply, but probably not all of them, okay? So why don't you, can you kindly take out your electronic device and uh, log on to Hold on. And um, so, like I said, we may not go through all the questions. In fact, I will. I will start you off. Uh, I will try. I will try and do question one. Okay, so just just log on, log on for now, and um, you can do you can do question two. But I'll I'll do 
Okay, I'll, okay, question one is this. So question one is, I'm long 200 gammas in China Mobile, share price is 70, and the implied vol is 32. <clears throat> what would I expect my daily theta to be? Well, it is just a straightforward application of that formula. Theta is equal to a half gamma times sigma s squared. Okay. Now this is the what? What is that? This is the expected. This is the expected uh, or ex ante gamma revenue. Okay. This is not the actual. This is what the market thinks will happen. So when sigma s. Uh, is equal to ds, then what you get is a half gamma sigma s square will equal to theta will equal to a half sigma, sorry, a gamma, uh, and then sigma, uh, what am I saying, times ds okay now this is a handy little identity to try and remember it doesn't take a lot to remember and i'm going to apply that here so it will be a half times now the, the gamma here literally it's a dollar gamma so you just put the 200 in there uh what is the sigma 32 so 32 divided by 16 times S is 70, okay? Now, 32 is a great number because it divides into 16, it becomes two, but it's 2%, okay? Uh, so, yeah, you gotta be careful, okay? So 2% of $70, so a half times, times 200 is 100. So it's 100 times the square of 1.4, which should be uh, 196. So this is the right answer. Okay. Everyone is okay with that? Yeah? These things are not hard. I think they're fun and they don't require a lot of mem memorization. Okay, now. Why don't you try, why don't you try question two? And uh, so, are you all, I've got 15, more than 15 people here. 15, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 20 people here. The other five are not able to log on, or are you just shy? Are you guys over there able to log on to, to this? You can, okay. Don't be shy. Huh? Okay, so we're going to have a go at question two. Uh, thank you. Okay, now we have 19. So here's a question. I am short 200 gamma. Actually, I'll just let you read it. Okay. So I'll give you three minutes until 42 and a half. In the exam, you'll get around three minutes. Can you all read that?
Oh, actually, sorry, I, I overran. Um, so, I was making some notes here. Um, all right, so what is your, what is your answer? You, <coughs> what answer do you pick? I'll give you another 15 seconds. Okay, ready? Huh? Ah, is it? Yes. Sorry. All right. Forget this. Forget about this. Okay, question two. Vote, vote again, please. Next question. Next question is, what is your answer to question two? Okay. So, please vote again. Uh, my, my apologies. Okay, for question two. Just put in whatever you put in just now. Okay. Okay, so some people are choosing B and C and D. So B is the correct, uh, sorry, C is the correct answer. And the simple reason is that, what have you done? Well, you are short 200 gammas. It doesn't say how you are short, but one way you can be short is if you are short a call option, so here's your call option. So if you are short, you are like this, okay? So here is your profile, and then you hedge it. So you're gonna have a negative gamma revenue because when the, when the market goes up, you lose money from your call, but you lose faster than your hedge. And then when you make money, you make money slower than your, your hedge. And it's known as, this is known as gamma revenue, as I'm sure you know by now. Now, what is the formula for that? It's a half times gamma times ds squared. So this is really just testing your simple understanding of gamma revenue, which is a half times 200, that's the gamma, times ds1. What is ds? ds is one. What is the square of one? You all know the square of one, don't you? I, I sincerely hope so, okay? Uh, so it's 100. You don't even need a calculator. Okay? Oh, did I say the correct answer was B? No, it's not, it's C. Okay, C is the right answer. Uh, who got it right? Oh yeah, I, I did say C. I thought it was, I thought I said B. Uh, C is the correct answer. Okay. All right, now don't worry if you got it wrong. The, yeah, the point is not, I don't want you to get the right answer. I want you to think. And if you get it wrong, it, it's fine, as long as you know why, okay? If you don't know the answer and you ask your neighbor and then he told he or she told you the right answer and you got the right answer, there, there's no meaning to that, honestly. Okay. There is there is absolutely no meaning. Uh, now uh, I purchased the uh, HSBC November 60 call. And I sell the HSBC December 60 put, okay? Um, share price is currently 60. So we are talking about at the money options and there's no dividend, but assume that there is some interest in the market and I am gamma long, vega long, delta long, or gamma long, vega short, delta long, gamma short, vega long, delta long, 
gamma short vega short delta long well forget about delta to start with because you delta long everywhere okay so that you have to be delta long and the reason i can tell is if you are long a call you are long delta if you are short a call you are also long delta what does long delta mean long delta mean when market goes up when market goes up you're happy so that happens if you are long the call but also when you are short the put yeah i'm collecting premium okay see you later <coughs> um okay so of these four combinations uh which one is it and now so you can see that first of all you are talking at the money options um and but the dates are different so the call is actually shorter dated than the put okay now the way you can do this uh as far as gamma is concerned I'm just trying to think what is a good way to, to do this. Um, okay, so we are talking at the money options. And I guess it doesn't matter whether it's a call or a put. And I'm going to share with you uh, some characteristics okay um, maybe one day i'll put that in a slide if we have time but i want to share with you um, first of all the delta of at the money options and I'm going to talk about the gamma of at the money options. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter whether I'm talking calls or puts. In fact, this is just trying to tabulate that table that you might remember when I have I have one slide where there are there are you know I think three three little graphs for delta gamma and theta that graph that that slide is very useful this is just a reinterpretation of that now so for the uh for delta if you are talking call options uh they would be approximately approximately 50 somewhere around 50 short term or long term but for gamma the short term gamma is it higher than the long term or, or lower than the long term the short term gamma is always higher than the long term gamma and i have explained to you why that is the case before uh, you can go back a couple of tutorials and you would find the the answer there uh, now then you talk about theta okay um, now this is time decay and again for for short term options the theta is higher than longer term options i don't really want you to remember these things please don't do that but try to understand um so and then we can talk about uh vega now vega is the options price sensitivity when volatility itself is changing okay now for this one actually for the longer term option it is higher and for the lower for the shorter term option it's lower if you don't believe me you can come over here i'll show you all these things okay Although that, 
I mean, it's a way to verify, but this doesn't help you understand. So you can play around with this. For example, a, a 30, this is a 30 day option. And you can see that the Vega hmm, is 0.114. Can you see that? Now, if you simply change this 30 day to 60 day, and I change nothing else, okay, the Vega will go up. to 0.161, okay? So longer term options are actually more sensitive to change in volatility, okay? So that, that makes sense. You take two extremes. Hmm? One option is just for one week. The other is for three years. Which one do you think? It's, it's like the, the, you know, bond duration. So the longer bonds are obviously far more sensitive to interest rate movements. So, here is the option equivalent, okay? Uh, now, uh, likewise for, for gamma, so now for this 60-day option, the gamma is 0 0.039. If I change this to 30, would gamma go up or go down? Or no change? Axel says go up. Yes, it goes up by a little bit, but it has gone up, okay, to uh, 0 0.055, okay. Um, so this is what I've just drawn here in the table. Now, if you are equipped with this table, now you, you can go and you can tackle this question because all you're doing is uh, you are long a... Uh, November call, November call, so this is um, short term, and you are short December put, which is longer term, okay, now, first, let's look at the gamma, okay, now I already told you when both of them are at the money, then the short term will have a higher gamma. Now, the way I do these things, you don't have to follow, but it's, it's my habit. I like to put sort of imaginary numbers to help me think. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call this a seven gamma. Okay, doesn't matter. You can call it thirteen and a half if you want to, but I know that the December put gamma would be less than this. So I'm going to call that five, okay? And not only that, because I'm short this option, so I'm short gamma, so it'll be minus five. Now let's have a look at Vega. So I already told you that the longer term option would have a higher Vega, so let's, I don't know, what number do you like? 17. Okay, so I know that this one, the November one has to be smaller, so I'm going to say 13. And then here I'm short, so there's a negative sign in front of it. Okay, and then delta would be approximately 50. In fact, I'm long and I'm long. I'm long delta, I'm long delta. Okay, now you add them up, what do you get? So I'm going to be long, long gamma. So here's the total. I'm going to be short Vega and I'm going to be long Delta. Is there an answer for that? Is there such a choice? Long Vega, a gamma long, Vega short, Delta long. B. It's okay? Makes sense? I think trading is a lot of fun. Everyone is okay? If not, everything here is on record. Okay. Now, question four. Um, let me see.
Actually, maybe I will I will try and go through these because of uh, time limitation. Uh, four, five, six, and seven. I'll see if I can go through these. Okay. Now, for for question, I was hoping to ask you to do it, but never mind. Uh, for question four, I purchased the Hutchison. Hutchison is a company. Uh, November 65 call and I sell the Hutchison November 70 call so I I basically I'm long a call spread maturity date the same so I'm always looking for maturity I'm looking for strike I'm looking for direction okay so I'm long a call spread but actually both options are are, are what at the money, in the money, out of the money. What are they? Hutchison now trades at 62.50. Hmm. Out of the money. Can you add another point? She's breaking it in, huh? Uh, so both are out of the money, but this one is even more is even more OTM, but the other one is also OTM. Okay, so here's a question of what do you do when you are dealing with two options that are both of them out of the money? Now, so I'm long the November call, 65. I'm short the November call, 70 and I want to know what their gammas and vegas actually look like so like I said to you for my own comfort I, I like putting real numbers down okay so let's say the gamma of, of this this is like near the money is, is what I like to call it or nearer near the money The other one is further away. So let's say this one has a, a gamma of um, seven. Okay. Now, because the other one is far further away, I know that the gamma will be less. Doesn't matter how much less, just, just less, okay? So I'm gonna put a three on top of it, but because I'm short that option, it will be minus three, okay? Now, I also know that options that are closer to the money or nearer the money, so let's say I give this a, um, a 13. This is the Vega, okay? Now, options that are closer to the money will have a higher Vega compared to something that's further away. So maybe I give this a nine, but it will be minus nine. Now what? You just add them up. I'm long both. The answer is A. Okay? That's how you would do this question. Okay? Uh, all right. Number five. Uh, I purchase we might just be able to make it um, five six seven okay we got three questions uh, I got around 15 minutes uh, I purchased one time the January uh, 18,000 call wow that's a long time ago the Hang Seng is now more than 30,000 uh, contract size 50 one point in the Hang Seng index when you trade the futures is worth fifty dollars. I sell ten times the January two thousand and twelve sixty call in Hutchison. Contract size one thousand. I'm Vega flat as both options are at the money. Well, you know one is not correct because they haven't told you the spot price. You don't know if you're at the money or not. I'm Vega short as. The contract size of Hutchison is larger than 
Hang Seng. Well, first of all, is that true? The Hang Seng contract size will be 18,000 times 50, which is nine, 900,000. That's the contract size. Okay, now, you just got to know a little bit about the futures market. That's one contract for, in fact, looking at it today, with the Hang Seng above 30,000, Monday is going to fall like a, like a lead balloon. But uh, let's say 30,000. So what is, what, is the, what is the contract size or what is the value of one, one contract in the Hang Seng Futures Index? Huh? One and a half million dollars. It's a lot of money, right? Uh, now for the Hutchison, so that is actually uh, 10 times, because you sold 10 times 60 times 1,000, which is $600,000. So the Hutchison option is larger than the Hang Seng. Obviously, that's not true. I'm vague along as the contract value of Hang Seng is larger than that of Hutchison. Well, this part is true, but I'm still not convinced that C is the right answer because it really depends on whether these options are at the money, in the money or out of the money. And this, this question doesn't tell you. So what I'm saying is the Hutchison even if it's for a smaller amount, if this one is at the money, but if the Hang Seng was out of the money, your Vega position will look very different. But I'm, I'm going to go with that answer, okay? Because the other two are, are clearly wrong. Okay? That's the answer I was given, anyway. Uh, now, um, question six. And after seven, I'll, I'll let you go, okay? Uh, I purchased the, uh, oh, it's just like a repeat of the last question. I purchased one time the January 18,000 call in the Hang Seng. The gamma is 0 0.001. I sell 10 times, so this is like about, but you now, now you get uh, information about gamma. And if I normalize my position to $100 stock for both, my position is gamma long, gamma flat, or gamma short. Um, now, this question actually is, is something that traders should ask themselves every day. Um, so you know how your gamma revenue is calculated by a half gamma times the change in price squared. Now, if you do that and you try to work out the the uh, the dollar the dollar gamma revenue for both. So this one will be a half times gamma times one, or the square of one. So this one will be the half times gamma times the square of one. Now you can do it, so that's your dollar gamma revenue when the, when the hand sign moves by one point, or when Hutch moves by one dollar. Um, it isn't really very meaningful. It doesn't tell you much. Okay, so by normalizing, what we mean is, let's pretend that both of these are now worth 100. Now we know they're not, okay, but 100 is a magical, it's a very convenient number and if it moves, if both of them move by one dollar, 
That's what normalizing means, okay? If they both move by one dollar, then what, what is my position? Well, if both of these are worth a hundred, okay, and you move by a dollar, it is equivalent to moving one percent, okay? So we do it that way. Uh, so this is the normalize, normalize gamma revenue. Okay, now you, you watch what I do here. Okay, so it's a half times, so the gamma is the same, times 1%, which is the square of 180. Okay, so here you do the same thing. What's the square of, well, what, what is 1% of, um, hmm? huh? Uh, sorry, yes, nine, thank you. Um, you need to add another point, okay? Uh, one percent of this, 1% of 60 is uh, 60 cents, okay? Now, what is that? You can work it out with a calculator. I can work out the second one. Don't know the first one. What's the first one? Sixteen point two. It's like magic, isn't it? So, what is the right answer? You are long. You are long the first one. You short the second one. What's the right answer? You must know by now. B. Thank you. You came a flat. Now, that just wouldn't be obvious at the beginning at all until you start norm normalizing means, you know, okay, let's forget about the dollar gamma for a moment. Let's think in like, in bond duration terms. So if the market, if the entire market goes up by 1%, okay, what happens to my position? So normally, you might not think that way. You want to, you, you look at the stock price and you want to ask yourself, what if the stock moves by one dollar? Because all the Greeks are defined that way. Delta and your, all your dollar gammas and your, uh, your Vega. Your well, Vega is not. Okay. Um, now let me let me take one more. Question seven. Uh, So why don't you guys go home and have a look at eight and nine, and I'll give you mega points next week for those who can tell me what the answer is. Okay. Plus the last question of the previous set. Okay, okay. so question seven, uh, the October 65 call is currently trading at $2 with these Greeks. So 35 delta, which means 0 .0, 0 0.35 actually, but never mind. Okay. Gamma is 2. Vega is 0.1. So share price moves up $1 and volatility drops by 2 points. Ignoring theta for now. What is the new option value? It's actually very simple, okay? Now, you know how, um, there are actually two ways you can do this question. So the first way is to say, when you have a call option, so you were here, 
and now the price moves to here. Well, what is the new price? The new price is whatever is the movement because of delta plus the gamma revenue. This part, okay. Now the movement due to delta because the the um, the share price moves by one dollar, so the option is going to move by 0.35. But that is just a straight line. The gamma revenue is a half times gamma. So gamma is two a half times gamma times the square of the ds, which is one. Okay. So this is actually one, but it's actually 0 0.01, okay. Uh, so that is 0 0.01. And, but you've lost some money. You lost money because Vega is 0 0.1. So you have earned because of Delta, you earn because of Gamma but you lose because of Vega. Okay, so here you earn 0 0.35 plus 0 0.01, and then you are gonna lose 0.2. So you end up uh, you're gonna make 16 cents. So your new price, so your, your, your increase in value is 16 cents. So the new price is actually $2.16. Now that's one way to calculate it. The other way is you use the averaging delta. So you know the old delta is 35 and the new delta, what's the new delta? Can someone tell me? So the price has moved by one dollar and gamma is equal to two. What's the new delta? Sorry? 37. I want to give someone some points. I don't know who said 37. You did. Okay, I'll, I'll give a point to, to both of you. All right. So the average delta is 36. Now you can calculate the change in price, which is just the average delta times the change in the price, which is one dollar. So the change in price would be for the option will be uh, will be 36 cents. But you got to deduct what you are losing from the from the uh, the drop in Vega. Now that doesn't change, that is still 0 0.2. So end up, you're gonna have a price of 236 minus your Vega loss, which will be 216. Okay, so two ways you arrive at the same answer. All right, now I know it's only, it's 90 minute tutorial, but I'm really uh, challenging your your brain power. Um, so I'll um, I'll let you go. And uh, so just a repeat. Uh, next week, please do not come here on Saturday. So I'll see you on Sunday. We might have to change it to Sunday afternoon. And I'm sorry to those guys who are those students who are doing uh, cases in corporate finance okay but I'll keep you up to date on that all right thank you everyone thank you for coming okay